Hello everybody, welcome back. Hiya. So uh, Miss Finlay's here um, to do the second part of the grammar paper. Um, we had part two, um, which is already on the channel. If you haven't seen it already, check out, um, sorry, part one is already on the channel, so you can check that out. But this is gonna be part two of the English grammar paper, key stage two walkthrough. So yeah, let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back. So now we're going to go through part two of the of the Key Stage 2 2019 grammar paper. I actually work to mark these tests, so it's funny for me to um, have another little look back at the questions after marking so many thousands of um, questions. So let's get started with number 19. What kind of clause is underlined in the sentence below? So if we have a look at the sentence, if they could afford to, the ancient Romans ate well. Now, um, we should know that because if is a subordinating conjunction, we know that that is a subordinate clause. Now, we can remember the subordinating conjunctions by um, looking at, or well, I always say to remember, wabbits. So you could have when or while, as or after. B is for before. You could also have because. Oh, I'm looking at my screen and looking at my um, piece of paper. If, though, and since. Okay, number 20. Insert a dash in the correct place in the sentence below. So we should know that dashes are used to add extra information, to add parentheses. So it was a very exciting lesson. We learned how parachutes work and designed one of our own. So I'm looking for a place where additional information has been given and my dash would go here after lesson. It was a very exciting lesson, dash. So it's giving us a little bit more about why it was a very exciting um, lesson. Okay, moving on to what is the word class of the underlined word? So our school is bigger than theirs. Now, this question gives us a few different options. So we've got a coordinating conjunction. Well, I know that that can't possibly co be correct because a coordinating conjunction is used to um, link um, clauses and it's used to, as a cohesive device. A subordinating conjunction, well I know that it doesn't add additional information to a main clause. A possessive pronoun, well yes, this would be the correct one because it shows position, possession sorry, the school is belonging to them so it is a possessive pronoun. Number 22, insert a colon in the correct place in the sentence below. Now, I if I think of my two uses of colons, I can use a colon to list and I can use my a colon for an explanation. So, Joshua had mastered two new skateboarding skills. He could do a perfect aerial jump and execute a complete 180 degree turn. So, for here, my colon is going to go here just before skills, and this has been used for an explanation. I'm explaining the two new skills that Joshua has learned. Number 23. Now, I remember this question well from when I marked the papers in 2019. Add three commas in the correct places in the sentence below. Now here, my commas are being used to list. And I need to remember in this situation that I shouldn't be putting a comma before and. So I don't need a comma and and. So let's have a look. She wore a dark red skirt, comma, a woolen jumper, comma, a scarf with matching hat, comma, thick socks and black boots. So I have one, two and three commas there. Number 24, which sentence uses tense correctly? So for these kind of questions, you literally need to go through and see um, which ones work, which ones don't. We sat and ate our lunch once we had found a sunny picnic spot. Once we find a sunny picnic spot, we sat and ate our lunch. So that's not correct there. Once we had found a sunny picnic spot, we sit and eat our lunch. So that's our mistake there. And we sat and eat our lunch once we have found a sunny picnic spot. So the first one 
use his tents correctly. What I would say is check all of the options before you um, make your answer choice. 25. Underline the sentence that is most formal in the passage below. So, hope you can make it to my birthday party next week. It's going to be great. The venue is yet to be confirmed. I'm still checking out a couple of places. Okay, so if I look at the first sentence, there's no contractions there, but it is still quite chatty. The second sentence, I've got my contraction there. It's so I wouldn't say that that was the most formal. The venue is yet to be confirmed. I would say is the most formal there. I'm still checking out a couple of places while I've got a contraction here. So that would be the most formal. Number 26, circle the word in, that shows the sentence below is a command. Now, I know that a command is in an instruction and it usually starts with an imperative verb. So what an imp uh, lower down in the school, they might call it a bossy verb. It tells you what you need to do in that situation. To see pictures of the rugby match, click here. So in that situation, click is my um is the word that shows me that that's a command. Number 27, label it each box with subject or object. So usually when we teach um when we teach about subject and object it usually goes in the order SVO. So we usually have subject, verb and object. Apart from if it's in the passive voice, then it's in the opposite order. So the subject is the personal thing that's doing the action. Then you have the verb and the object is what's something that's having something done to it. So Sam would be our subject. Bakes would be our verb. And cakes is our object. And he would be our subject. Sold would be our verb. And them would be our object. Number 28. Rewrite the underlined verbs in the simple past. The sky begins to look darker as the storm approaches. So this here is an irregular um, verb. So we need to think, OK, what's that going to be? So begins is in the present tense. So in the past tense, that would be began. It wouldn't be beginned. And to look darker as the storm approaches, well, very simply, that would be approached. Now, you would need to make sure that you've got the spelling correct in these in order to receive that one mark. And it's a really simple one mark. Number 29, which sentence is closest in meaning to the one below? Now, this is quite a tricky one, I feel. It would take a lot of reading through. And if you just skimmed through and didn't read through properly, you might not get it. My dad has had his bike for two years. So has had. My dad no longer has this bike. That wouldn't be correct. My dad is having this bike for his birthday. Well, no, that's not what it means. My dad has this bike now, possibly. My dad will have a, a bike in two years' time. Well, it doesn't say that, so it's going to be this one here. Number 30, circle the three adjectives in the sentence below. So I'm looking for adjectives. Adjects are words which describe nouns. So if I look for my nouns, it should help me to find my um, adjectives. He made his way up the cobbled street. So cobbled is describing the street. Striding like the bold and determined man he was. So I have my three adjectives there. I've seen all kinds of crazy things, people underlining striding, man. But it's important to know that adjectives do describe nouns. Number 31, which sentence is punctuated correctly? So here we've got direct speech using inverted commas to punctuate speech. Now, the rules for working with um, inverted commas for direct speech are we need a comma, before the speech begins, we need a 66. Our letter needs, our, our first letter of the speech needs to start with a capital letter. And then we need punctuation before the 99. So those are our rules, really. So let's see which of these are correct. Our parents always say, well, I can't see a comma there and that's not a capital. So that's not going to be correct. This one does have a comma, but this doesn't, speech doesn't begin with a capital letter, so that one's not correct. 
Our parents always say, well, I've got my comma, I've got my capital, I've got my punctuation, and then I've got my 99. So I think that one is definitely going to be correct. And then if I check this one, well, I've got a comma missing there. So it's not going to be that one. OK, which underlined word is an adverb? So I know that adverb, an adverb describes a verb. Now, usually we teach children to recognise that adverbs usually end in L-Y, but not always. So it is important in year six that you do explore adverbs that don't end in L-Y. So I would say that that would be some advice for me. Go and look at some adverbs that don't end in L-Y. But I think the one here does. But what they've tried to trick you by doing is giving all of those underlined words end in L-Y. And not all of them are adverbs. Some of them are adjectives. So let's have a look. The spring garden looks lovely. Well, we're saying that the garden looks lovely. So that's going to be an adjective. My sister has a wobbly tooth. Again, that describes the tooth. So that's not going to be an adverb. The clothes are folded neatly. Now, the word neatly describes how the clothes are folded. So that is an adverb there. And her brown hair is long and curly. Again, curly describes her hair. So that's not correct. Number 33. What word class do the underlined words belong to? You can have an apple or an orange for your snack. Since it is sunny, you can eat your snack outside. Although I prefer oranges, apples are easier to eat. Now, you should recognise here that these are all conjunctions. We have or, which is a coordinating conjunction, and we have since and although, which are subordinating conjunctions. So the answer you would simply need to put here is conjunctions you wouldn't put subordinating you wouldn't put coordinating you would literally just put your answer there as conjunctions number 34 explain how the comma changes the meaning now i would say this is commas to avoid ambiguity commas for clarity however you want to um to put it so explain how the comma changes the meaning of the second sentence so we're looking at this sentence here I asked if Jake, Thomas and Lily were coming to the barbecue. So in this sentence, Jake, Thomas is one person and Lily is one person. So here, two people are coming to the barbecue, whereas this comma here, it turns it from being Jake, Thomas being one name to Jake and Thomas being two completely different people. So you would need to make reference to both sentences. So you might say in the second sentence. Jake. Oh, I need a comma there. Jake and Thomas. Are two different people. Whereas. In sentence one, Jake Thomas is one person. That is his name. Okay, number 35, underline the adverbial in the sentence below. So here we have our adverbial. Our adverbials give us time, reason, manner and place. You can remember that as tramp. So I'm looking for my sentence. Last week, Ruby went swimming and played football. Well, my adverbial is last week and that is an adverbial of T for time. Number 36, complete the sentence below with a relative clause. Now, I know that my relative clause describes a noun. And I can use relative pronouns such as who, which, whom, that. So let's have a look at the sentence that I need to add to. So his sister. So because I'm speaking about a person, I think I'm going to select the relative pronoun who. But I need to put it in a bit of context. So his sister is learning to speak Polish. So I, I might want to say um, his sister who 
enjoys languages. is learning to speak Polish. But you could have a, a series of different um, sentences. You could you could put a few different re um, relative clauses in there. Um, who is six years old? Who speaks French fluently? As long as it makes sense, and as long as it has one of those relative pronouns, it will count as a relative clause. Number 37, how does the conjunction change the meaning of the second sentence? So again, we're looking at the differences between the two. We listen to music after we ate our lunch. We listen to music while we ate our lunch. So after, that means that we listen to, the, we listen to music once we'd eaten. And the second one means we listen to music at the same time as eating. So the um, second sentence shows that they ate and listened to music at the same time. And then you could even say, whereas... In the first sentence, they ate, they ate their lunch and then they listened to music. So as long as you make that clear. Number 38, circle the modal verb in the sentence below. So modal verbs, we have things like uh, must, should, could, would. So let's see if we can find those in the sentence there. Kate hoped that she would see the goats and sheep at the farm. Would is our modal verb there. Number 39, rewrite the sentence below in the passive. Remember to punctuate your answer correctly. And now for me, that is the biggest thing. You see so many people losing out on marks because they forgot, they've forgotten a capital letter. They've forgotten a full stop. So the, wild, the wind damaged the fence. So as I said before, normally if a sentence is in the active voice, it go we go subject, verb, object. But when we look at the passive, the object becomes the focus of the sentence. So I would change this to the fence, and I remember my capital letter, the fence was damaged by, now you can usually tell of sentences in the passive by that word by, the fence was damaged by the wind. And I must remember my full stop. Insert two commas and a semicolon in the correct places in the passage below. So I'm looking for a place where I can put commas and a semicolon, which usually goes between two main clauses which link in meaning. So last Wednesday. Well, I know last Wednesday would be my fronted adverbial there. So I'm going to put a comma in there. So last Wednesday, we performed a play at school. Well, that's the end of the set. That's the end of a sentence. So let me see if I can read on and see if a semicolon could possibly go there. I invited my parents to come and watch. So definitely that is going to be my semicolon. When I first went on stage, now that's my fronted adverbial. So my comma would need to go there. I was so nervous that I nearly forgot my lines and I always need to go back and check that I've put things in the correct, correct places, which I have done. Okay, circle the three nouns in the sentence below. So we have our concrete nouns, we have abstract nouns, we have collective nouns. In this situation, we've got two uh, common nouns and one abstract noun. So the fire gave the room a cozy feeling. Well, fire is our noun, the room is our noun, and feeling is also a noun, okay? It's been described as being cozy. Which sentence uses the passive? The school proposed building a new playground. The issue was discussed at a council meeting. The council voted in favour of the proposal. They started the building in a new playground last week. So this one would be the issue was discussed at a council meeting. And I always think if you could add by something, 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 I always say by 100 storming elephants. If you can add that to the end of a sentence, then that's in the passive. 
So the issue was discussed at a council meeting by a thousand storming elephants. Not that that would really be a sensible idea, but that tells me that that's in the passive. I remember this this question extremely well. It did throw the children when they came they came to it when doing these tests. Write the contracted form of the underlying words. Now, people, I, I don't feel like children these days would use this contracted form. We shall not do that again. Now, lots of people did, did shalt like that, which is definitely wrong. Lots of people put shouldn't, but the correct answer is actually shan't. We shan't do that again. Complete the sentence by writing a word formed from the root word music on each line. Now, it's really important with these kind of questions that the spelling is correct also. So every member of the Jones family was musical. But only Mr. Jones was a professional musician. So that's just testing the children's knowledge of root words. Number 45, what is the grammatical term for the underlying words in the sentence below? The new paintbrushes. Now, I'm guessing people put all kinds of random answers, like fronted adverbials and things like that. But paintbrushes is my noun and new is my adjective. So here I have a noun phrase. Okay, number 46, circle each word that should begin with a capital letter in the sentence below. So I know that when should start with a capital letter because that's the beginning of a sentence. Birmingham, because it is the name of a city. Gareth, because it's the name of a person. Now, the thing here that throws some children is not putting a capital for aunt. You need a capital for aunt and a capital for Laura. Number 47, circle three determiners in the sentence below. So determiners usually come before nouns. So William didn't have any cereal in the house. So he went to go and buy some cornflakes. So I, we have the, the house, and we have some cornflakes. Insert an apostrophe in the correct place in the sentence below. Now, again, they've tried to trick trick the children by giving lots of words that could possibly have an apostrophe in especially when they put that s in there it will throw them so pupils coats should be hung on the pegs now an apostrophe wouldn't go on coats because that's the the coats don't have anything belonging to it the coats belong to the pupils so it's pupils that's going to need to have an apostrophe and because there's more than one our apostrophe is going to go at the end of the s there because there's more than one pupil Number 49, circle three prepositions in the sentence below. So prepositions show the position of something. They show where something is. So after the game, Omar and Alicia, and Omar and Alicia walked home with their grandparents who lived across the road. So we have after, we have across, and we have with. Number 50, circle the coordinating conjunction in the sentence below. If you want to enter the competition, you can send your idea by email or by post. So I know that or is my coordinating conjunction there. And there we have it. That's our last question in that paper. Now, I personally think that's a really reasonable paper. Let's hope that we get a similar one to that um, in 2022. Thanks for watching, everyone.